Higher performance in hard disk drives comes from devices which have faster performance characteristics. These devices include those with rotating media, hereby called rotating drives, that is, hard disk drives, floppy disk drives, optical disks, and it also covers devices without moving parts like solid state drives. For SSDs, most of the attributes related to the movement of mechanical components are not applicable, but the device is actually affected by some other electrically based element that still causes a measurable delay when isolating and measuring that attribute. These performance characteristics can be grouped into two categories, access time and data transfer time. Access time The access time or response time of a rotating drive is a measure of the time it takes before the drive can actually transfer data. The factors that control this time on a rotating drive are mostly related to the mechanical nature of the rotating disks and moving heads. It is composed of a few independently measurable elements that are added together to get a single value when evaluating the performance of a storage device. The access time can vary significantly, so it is typically provided by manufacturers or measured in benchmarks as an average. For SSDs this time is not dependent on moving parts, but rather electrical connections to solid-state memory, so the access time is very quick and consistent. Most testing and benchmark applications do not draw a distinction between rotating drives and SSDs so they both go through the same measurement process. The key components that are typically added together to obtain the access time are, seek time, rotational latency, other, command processing time, settle time. Seek time. With rotating drives, the seek time measures the time it takes the head assembly on the actuator arm to travel to the track of the disk where the data will be read or written. The data on the media is stored in sectors which are arranged in parallel circular tracks and there is an actuator with an arm that suspends a head that can transfer data with the media. When the drive needs to read or write a certain sector it determines in which track the sector is located. It then uses the actuator to move the head to that particular track. If the initial location of the head was the desired track then the seek time would be zero. If the initial track was the outermost edge of the media and the desired track was at the innermost edge then the seek time would be the maximum for that drive. Seek times are not linear compared with the seek distance traveled because of factors of acceleration and deceleration of the actuator arm. A rotating drive's average seek time is the average of all possible seek times which technically is the time to do all possible seeks divided by the number of all possible seeks, but in practice it is determined by statistical methods or simply approximated as the time of a seek over one third of the number of tracks. Average seek time ranges from under 4 amiss for high-end server drives, to 15 amiss for mobile drives with the most common mobile drives at about 12 are missing the most common desktop drives typically being around 9 are miss. The first HDD had an average seek time of about 600 milliseconds, and by the middle 1970s, HDDs were available with seek times of about 25 are miss. Some early PC drives used a stepper motor to move the heads, and as a result had seek times as slow as 80 a euro. 120 are miss. But this was quickly improved by voice coil type actuation in the 1980s, reducing seek times to around 20 and the seek time has continued to improve slowly over time. The other two less commonly referenced seek measurements are track to track and full stroke. The track to track measurement is the time required to move from one track to an adjacent track. This is the shortest possible seek time. In HDDs this is typically between 0.2 and 0.8 m as the full stroke measurement is the time required to move from the outermost track to the innermost track. This is the longest possible seek time. With SSDs there are no moving parts, so a measurement of the seek time is only testing electronic circuits preparing a particular location on the memory in the storage device. Typical SSDs will have a seek time between 0.08 and 0.16 m is, Short stroking, short stroking is a term used in enterprise storage environments to describe an HDD that is purposely restricted in total capacity so that the actuator only has to move the heads across a smaller number of total tracks. This limits the maximum distance the heads can be from any point on the drive thereby reducing its average seek time, but also restricts the total capacity of the drive. 
This reduced seek time enables the HDD to increase the number of IOPS available from the drive. The cost and power per usable byte of storage rises as the maximum track range is reduced. Effect of audible noise and vibration control, measured in D-bar, audible noise is significant for certain applications, such as DVRs, digital audio recording and quiet computers. Low noise disks typically use fluid bearings, slower rotational speeds and reduce the seek speed under load to reduce audible clicks and crunching sounds. Drives in smaller form factors are often quieter than larger drives. Some desktop and laptop class disk drives allow the user to make a trade-off between seek performance and drive noise. For example, Seagate offers a set of features in some drives called sound barrier technology that includes some user or system controlled noise and vibration reduction capability. Faster seek times typically require more energy usage to quickly move the heads across the platter, causing loud noises from the pivot bearing and greater device vibrations as the heads are rapidly accelerated during the start of the seek motion and decelerated at the end of the seek motion. Quiet operation reduces movement speed and acceleration rates, but at a cost of reduced seek performance. Rotational latency Rotational latency is the delay waiting for the rotation of the disk to bring the required disk sector under the read-write head. It depends on the rotational speed of a disk, measured in revolutions per minute. For most magnetic media-based drives, the average rotational latency is typically based on the empirical relation that the average latency in milliseconds for such a drive is one half the rotational period. Maximum rotational latency is the time it takes to do a full rotation excluding any spin up time. Therefore, the rotational latency and resulting access time can be improved by increasing the rotational speed of the disks. This also has the benefit of improving the throughput. The spindle motor speed can use one of two types of disk rotation methods, one, constant linear velocity, used mainly in optical storage, varies the rotational speed of the optical disk depending upon the position of the head, and two, constant angular velocity, used in HDDs, standard FDDs, a few optical disk systems, and vinyl audio records, spins the media at one constant speed regardless of where the head is positioned. Another wrinkle occurs depending on whether surface bit densities are constant. Usually, with a CAV spin rate, the densities are not constant so that the long outside tracks have the same number of bits as the shorter inside tracks. When the bit density is constant, outside tracks have more bits than inside tracks and is generally combined with a CLV spin rate. In both these schemes contiguous bit transfer rates are constant. This is not the case with other schemes such as using constant bit density with a CAV spin rate. Effect of reduced power consumption Power consumption has become increasingly important, not only in mobile devices such as laptops but also in server and desktop markets. Increasing data center machine density has led to problems delivering sufficient power to devices, and getting rid of the waste heat subsequently produced as well as environmental and electrical cost concerns. Most hard disk drives today support some form of power management which uses a number of specific power modes that save energy by reducing performance. When implemented, an HDD will change between a full power mode to one or more power saving modes as a function of drive usage. Recovery from the deepest mode, typically called sleep where the drive is stopped or spun down, may take as long as several seconds to be fully operational thereby increasing the resulting latency. The drive manufacturers are also now producing green drives that include some additional features that do reduce power, but can adversely affect the latency including slower spindle speeds and parking heads off the media to reduce friction. Other, the command processing time or command overhead is the time it takes for the drive electronics to set up the necessary communication between the various components in the device so it can read or write the data. This is of the order of 0.003 amiss, very much less than other overhead times, so it is usually ignored when benchmarking hardware. The settle time is the time it takes the heads to settle on the target track and stop vibrating so they do not read or write off track. This time is usually very small, typically less than 0.1 or miss, and modern HDD manufacturers account for it in their seek time specifications. Data transfer rate, 
the data transfer rate of a drive covers both the internal rate and the external rate. The measurable data transfer rate will be the lower of the two rates. The sustained data transfer rate or sustained throughput of a drive will be the slower of the sustained internal and sustained external rates. The sustained rate is less than or equal to the maximum or burst rate because it does not have the benefit of any cache or buffer memory in the drive. The internal rate is further determined by the media rate, sector overhead time, head switch time, and cylinder switch time. These are not applicable to SSDs. Media rate, rate at which the drive can read bits from the surface of the media. Sector overhead time, additional time needed for control structures and other information necessary to manage the drive, locate and validate data and perform other support functions. Head switch time, additional time required to electrically switch from one head to another and begin reading. Only applies to multi-head drive and is about 1 to 2 milliseconds. Cylinder switch time, additional time required to move to the first track of the next cylinder and begin reading. The name cylinder is used because typically all the tracks of a drive with more than one head or data surface are read before moving the actuator. This time is typically about twice the track to track seek time. As of 2001, it was about 2 to 3 milliseconds. Data transfer rate can be measured by writing a large file to disk using special file generator tools then reading back the file. As of 2010, a typical 7200 RPM desktop HDD has a disk to buffer data transfer rate up to 1030 Mbit s. This rate depends on the track location, so it will be higher on the outer zones and lower on the inner zones, and is generally somewhat higher for 10,000 RPM drives. Floppy disk drives have sustained disk to buffer data transfer rates that are one or two orders of magnitude slower than that of HDDs. The sustained disk to buffer data transfer rates varies amongst families of optical disk drives with the slowest 1x CDs at 1.23 Mbit s floppy like while a high performance 12x Blu-ray disk drive at 432 Mbit s approaches the performance of HDDs. A current widely used standard for the buffer to computer interface is 3.0 Wigbit SSATA, which can send about 300 megabyte per second from the buffer to the computer, and thus is still comfortably ahead of today's disk to buffer transfer rates. SSDs do not have the same internal limits of HDDs, so their internal and external transfer rates are often maximizing the capabilities of the drive to host interface. Effective file system Transfer rate can be influenced by file system fragmentation and the layout of the files. Defragmentation is a procedure used to minimize delay in retrieving data by moving related items to physically proximate areas on the disk. Some computer operating systems perform defragmentation automatically. Although automatic defragmentation is intended to reduce access delays, the procedure can slow response when performed while the computer is in use. Flash Memoria Euro-based SSDs do not need defragmentation. However, because SSDs write pages of data that are much larger than the blocks of data managed by the file system, over time, an SSD's write performance can degrade as the drive becomes full of pages which are partial or no longer needed by the file system. This can be ameliorated by a trim command from the system or internal garbage collection. Flash memory wears out over time as it is repeatedly written to. The writes required by defragmentation wear the drive for no speed advantage. Effect of aerial density, HDD data transfer rate depends upon the rotational speed of the disks and the data recording density. Because heat and vibration limit rotational speed, increasing density has become the main method to improve sequential transfer rates. Aerial density has been increased over time by increasing both the number of tracks across the disk, and the number of sectors per track. The latter will increase the data transfer rate for a given RPM speed. Improvement of data transfer rate performance is correlated to the aerial density only by increasing a track's linear surface bit density. Simply increasing the number of tracks on a disk can affect seek times but not gross transfer rates. According to industry observers and analysts for 2011 to 2016, a Euro OE the current roadmap predicts no more than a 20% per year improvement in bit density a Euro. Seek times have not kept up with throughput increases, 
which themselves have not kept up with growth in bit density and storage capacity. Interleave Sector interleave is a mostly obsolete device characteristic related to data rate, dating back to when computers were too slow to be able to read large continuous streams of data. Interleaving introduced gaps between data sectors to allow time for slow equipment to get ready to read the next block of data. Without interleaving, the next logical sector would arrive at the read-write head before the equipment was ready, requiring the system to wait for another complete disk revolution before reading could be performed. However, because interleaving introduces intentional physical delays between blocks of data thereby lowering the data rate, setting the interleave to a ratio higher than required causes unnecessary delays for equipment that has the performance needed to read sectors more quickly. The interleaving ratio was therefore usually chosen by the end user to suit their particular computer system's performance capabilities when the drive was first installed in their system. Modern technology is capable of reading data as fast as it can be obtained from the spinning platters, so hard drives usually have a fixed sector interleave ratio of 1 to 1, which is effectively no interleaving being used. Power consumption Power consumption has become increasingly important, not only in mobile devices such as laptops but also in server and desktop markets. Increasing data center machine density has led to problems delivering sufficient power to devices and getting rid of the waste heat subsequently produced, as well as environmental and electrical cost concerns. Heat dissipation is tied directly to power consumption, and as drives age, disk failure rates increase at higher drive temperatures. Similar issues exist for large companies with thousands of desktop PCs. Smaller form factor drives often use less power than larger drives. One interesting development in this area is actively controlling the seek speed so that the head arrives at its destination only just in time to read the sector, rather than arriving as quickly as possible and then having to wait for the sector to come around. Many of the hard drive companies are now producing green drives that require much less power and cooling. Many of these green drives spin slower thereby generating less heat. Power consumption can also be reduced by parking the drive heads when the disk is not in use reducing friction, adjusting spin speeds, and disabling internal components when not in use. Drives use more power, briefly, when starting up. Although this has little direct effect on total energy consumption, the maximum power demanded from the power supply, and hence its required rating, can be reduced in systems with several drives by controlling when they spin up. On SCSI hard disk drives, the SCSI controller can directly control spin up and spin down of the drives. Some parallel ATA and serial ATA hard disk drives support power up in standby or PUIS, each drive does not spin up until the controller or system BIOS issues a specific command to do so. This allows the system to be set up to stagger disk start up and limit maximum power demand at switch on. Some SATA2 and later hard disk drives support staggered spin-up, allowing the computer to spin up the drives in sequence to reduce load on the power supply when booting. Most hard disk drives today support some form of power management which uses a number of specific power modes that save energy by reducing performance. When implemented an HDD will change between a full power mode to one or more power saving modes as a function of drive usage. Recovery from the deepest mode, typically called sleep, may take as long as several seconds. Shock resistance, shock resistance is especially important for mobile devices. Some laptops now include active hard drive protection that parks the disk heads if the machine is dropped, hopefully before impact, to offer the greatest possible chance of survival in such an event. Maximum shock tolerance to date is 350G for operating and 1000G for non-operating. References